Hey, welcome to another edition of Kyle Meredith with. It's the interview series presented by WFPK and WFPK.org, Consequence, and the Consequence Podcast Network. Thank you so much, as always, for making your way here and checking this out. You know what to do if you like what you hear, what you see. Hit that subscribe button. We put out to have three new interviews every single week, so it's a great way to keep up with all of your favorite artists. I am so excited today to be talking with Michael Ely. Hello. Hey, Kyle. How you doing? To a great man. Uh, what we've got here today is the exceptionally titled The Woman in the House Across the Street from the Girl in the Window. It's taken everybody a bit to get on that one. What a fun project you've got going on here. First, I'll just throw the uh, the congrats. This was uh, this was a lot of fun to watch. I appreciate that. Thank you. It was uh, it was it was a lot of fun to make. And, uh, you know, I just I couldn't believe that uh, we were actually getting a chance to do this. So it was uh, it was fun. Yeah. So let, let's start out with what it is. How do you, what, what do you, how do you explain this to you? You know, whoever you're talking to your friends, like what exactly is this kind of a series? I mean, I think in simple terms, it's a satire and uh, you know, we're, we're taking the, the psychological thriller genre and kind of, you know, turning it on, turning it on its head, you know, and, and the genre itself is already kind of a, kind of an interactive one in which, you know, people always, try to imagine what they would do if it was them. And, mm -hmm. you know, they talk back to the screen and say, don't go in that room and all that stuff. So like, we actually, we actually poke fun at a, at a lot of that stuff. And I think we start off with the title, you know, I think the title kind of lets you know, hey, we're, we're gonna have some fun with this. Yeah, it was actually fun. I, I was reading some of, um, I think it was comments on one of your, your social medias and, and just your fans, your followers. Uh, like just from watching the trailer, I don't think they instantly understood like, oh yeah, no, this, you know, it's, it's so it's it's been really fun kind of watching people sort of figure that out as it goes along. And, and that must be great from your all's point of view as well. Yeah, I mean, you know, when, when I read the scripts, um, you know, the first couple episodes everything seems you know mysterious mm -hmm. and you know lurking and looming like there's this there's this tension building and you know it all seems so real and you know the goal was to try and sustain that and let the comedy kind of kind of just bubble up you know as it just becomes more and more outrageous and i think the tone of the show is what people will probably be talking about the most um, because it's so, it's just, it's just outrageous. It's absurd. Yeah. Well, there is those moments too. And, you know, I, I mentioned all the wine, of course, all the casserole dishes uh, yeah. as it goes along there. I mean, it, it did bring to mind stuff that went a bit further out, you know, like airplane and the naked gun series comes to mind instantly when, when we think about these kind of things, but were you all talking about, you know, anything, classic in, in that sort of way where, where, where you were kind of referencing? Um, you know, look, we shot it about a year ago and there were all kinds of references. I don't remember most of them right now. Um, but yeah, I mean, we, we, the hardest thing was probably, you know, keeping a straight face while being as sincere and earnest as possible and selling, selling that, that level of comedy right? There's nothing broad about this. And so it was very tough to kind of get through certain scenes and certain moments. Um, but, you know, good actors came together and just, we all just kind of, you know, did our best. And I think, you know, Rachel, uh, Larry, and Hugh, the script that they wrote, the scripts that they wrote, I mean, they, they weren't afraid to play when we were on set. And they just, they just, they just put it all out there. And we just, we just kind of played. It was nice. Yeah. I mean, that's got to be interesting, especially this kind uh, of satire as we're talking about this kind of comedy, the way you approach it as an actor, because it, it is, it isn't, it isn't slapstick or something like that. You know, th this isn't exactly physical comedy either, you know, so when you are approaching that uh, as Douglas, as Doug, uh, the character that you play, like, how, how do you do that? Because you, you are playing it straight, but there's still a laugh to be had, right? Yeah, and you you know that's a good observation. I, I think you know the hardest thing was to play sincere, but kind of know that you're winking. You know what I mean? You're kind of winking at the genre and the material itself. Um, 
that was that was a hard thing to do, and it and it took some getting used to. Um, you know, Kristen was almost in every scene, so mm-hmm. it took her a little less time to get dialed in. But I was coming in and out, and it, you know, there were days when it was like, wow, I got to really kind of, you know. I got to really kind of understand that, you know, like I'm, I'm going for this, but like, it's, if you feel as an actor that that might have not been a great take, it was probably the one they're going to use. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because of course it was. It was. A too, it was a little too, uh, you know, if it was a little too uh, melodramatic or something, you know, it was probably spot on. <laughs> You know, and that was that was kind of the hard thing to do as an actor was just be okay with that because you're so as an actor, you oftentimes you'll go through a scene and if you'll start to replay it in your head when you're done and you're like stressing about what you didn't get done. And with this one, you're kind of like, oh, well, it'll work. <laughs> and it did work by the way it worked beautifully i mean everybody's performance on you. here yeah and, and, it, and it's interesting watching watching your character because uh you know we're not going to get into the specifics of the plot obviously but but i kept thinking about all the things that happen when you leave yeah. like when you leave the room when you leave the house like it's usually like you know right place right time wrong place wrong time but your, your guy seems to be everything happens as soon as you're out of the picture yeah yeah, I mean, it, the, with what happens uh, to, uh, you know, his family, um, you know, it was almost kind of difficult to find that funny. Mm-hmm. But the circumstances that led to, uh, I think that, that was how we were able to justify so many things was, if you really look at the circumstances, it all kind of adds up and it all kind of, it is funny and it is a little bit ridiculous. And, you know, uh, you know, those moments, it's so hard to not say what they are, but those moments are so precious and so important because they really help kind of build the infrastructure that allows you to kind of just ride this highway all the way through. And so, you know, you know take your daughter to work day is it will forever be something that i think uh, people will think twice about moving forward i don't know how much uh, you know how much do you think about when, when you're when you're coming up with your characters you know when, when you're embodying these these uh taking it from the page how much you think about the backstory but um I, I say this coming from consequence of sound like do you think about like what's the type of music that that doug listens to Oh, yeah, yeah. It's it's funny because there was a part of me that felt like he was an NPR guy, um, you know, all the time, just NPR, 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 and would like just imbibe NPR podcast and 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 all of that. I th- I think you know he would also be the kind of parent that would do kind of what I do, which is, it's a uh, sing along um, songs that, you know, your, your child wants to sing. So whenever I'm in the car with my daughter and she wants to, you know, play songs, I would probably, I would be game for it. And I would be singing along with those songs, which is exactly the kind of father I am in real life. So it's a, uh, I know more about Katy Perry and T- Taylor Swift than I ever thought I would. It's, 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 it's interesting when we get to that point. I, I have a son, he's yeah. now 14. And, and I find myself like, when I find that he's interested in an artist and, and, I, and I latch onto that, and I'm like, oh, great. We're going to go down that hole and everything. Yeah. He's like, no, it's, it's just that song. And, 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 and like, sometimes you hit it and sometimes you don't, you know? It's, it's, right. you know. it's different than when we were growing up. Like we just... We, we were, I, I, maybe it's not different. I don't know. I mean, it, it just, you know, we grew up with albums mm-hmm. and there was a whole, you took the whole thing in. And I think since streaming, it's been, you know, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. very compartmentalized. So, um, but still, um, you know, I, I think there's a lot, I had fun, you know, singing along with my daughter and watching her joy. It's all worth it. 
do you try to introduce like your coming of age artists to her yet? Absolutely, absolutely. I remember first time she heard uh, 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 If It Isn't Love by New Edition and Candy Girl, right? Like those are like the first two that I kind of introduced her to. And, you know, it, it was, she loved them. She absolutely loved them. And, you know, that, that just made my heart sing on so many levels because it's about that kind of cross-generation bond, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? That cross-generational bond. So, um, yeah, it, it's, it's, it was fun. It was a lot of fun. It's also said something about the strength of the song right there. If it can, if it can make that jump, like that's, yeah, that's a bona fide I mean, classic. When you get in the car and your daughter says, hey, can I hear Mr. Telephone, man? <laughs> <laughs> Yes. You're like, yeah, yeah, that's so much better than fuck the police. <laughs> <laughs> Which, by the way, has its time and place as well. It has its time and place and its merits. It's just, she's not, she's five. She's not ready. Sure. Yet. Sure. It'd be the cutest five year old version of that, though, I'm sure. Right, right, right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, so we're talking about uh, with this series. And again, uh, I, I'm just using the opportunity to say the title again The Woman in the House Across the Street from the Girl in the Window. <laughs> Uh, as it plays in the thriller, this is not your only, I mean, you've done this stuff before, but I, I also want to bring up the, the one you have coming up because the devil, you know, hits on the, the, the sort of the real version uh, of thriller right here. And this finds you not only acting in it uh, alongside uh, Omar Epps and, uh, and with Charles Murray uh, writing and directing, but, uh, but you're the executive producer, right? Yes. Yes. The yeah. devil, you know, yeah, that's a movie uh, with Lionsgate and that'll be out uh, in the spring, I believe. Yeah, um, I'm excited for people to see that one. The tone is obviously completely and utterly different, um, and it's probably one of the the more you know just kind of gritty, simple storytelling um, family movies. You know, and when I say family, I don't mean like in the great way, but like it is a family movie in a lot of it's a family drama. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think um, it'll be the kind of movie that people can relate to, you know, as far as I'm concerned, if you have siblings, um, if you have cousins that are close to sibling, like it, it, you can totally relate to these people and everything that they're going through. And, um, you know, it is it is the implosion of a family in a lot of way. Yeah. Well, I know you've been talking about it for a few years now about that moment where you'll finally start stepping behind the camera a little bit more is this the beginning of that jump yeah you know i think when i did um perfect guy uh, i was an ep on that one as well and then you know um um perfect guy and then uh so it was it was you know that was the beginning <laughs> that was the beginning then there was jacob's ladder and then and then you know, the devil, you know, and I definitely want to continue to to develop an executive produce and then hopefully ultimately um, direct one day. Mm -hmm. Coming yeah. up, you think that's soon? I mean, is, is, is that something you're going to be shooting for sooner than later? You know, I keep thinking um, Charles wants me to do it this year <laughs> and, and Charles Murray, he wants me to do it this year. I'm, I'm looking to do it, uh, I'd say within the next two to three years, I'll probably be able to do it. I just, I just, I'll be honest with you. Like I'm still enjoying acting. I'm still, there's still roles. I want to, I want to get out of my system. There's still things I want to play. And it's like, I'm just not a great multitasker. So it's like going, you know, I kind of want to switch gears when the time comes to direct, as opposed to kind of going back and forth. Yeah. It's interesting you say you're not a multitasker because I, you know, I, looking at what you do in your uh, with your philanthropy, uh, I know you're on uh, one of the boards. I think it was in a, was it Baltimore or Baltimore was, Museum of Art? Yeah, stuff like that. You know, and, and what, what you're talking about online, which I so appreciate. You know, the angles that you come from there, but uh, but that side of your life, like like what's going on in that? Because it seems like you multitask and stay pretty busy on on, on that side as well. Yeah, it, you know, it, it's interesting because it, it might look like I'm multitasking, but really everything is pretty compartmentalized because I, I can't multitask, sadly. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, it's, it's like, you know, uh, obviously acting, you know, family first, and then there's, you know, there's acting and then um, my commitments to the community. Um, 
you know, that's pretty much the order in which things happen. And, um, you know, I'll do everything in my power that I can when I can. And the juggling act has become, at this point in my life, when to like kind of say no, like I can't do that right now. I, I just, my, my plate is too full and I have to learn to be okay with that because there were years where I would say no to things and the guilt would just eat me alive. And um, I, I'm, I'm learning how to live with that and I'm learning how to, um, how to kind of find peace with doing as much as you can when you can and you know, being okay with that. Yeah, I know that's an important moment right there. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, in the meantime, we got this great series, this, uh, this mini series, this limited series, whatever we call it uh, now on Netflix, which, you know, by the end of it, as a good thriller does, the door is just left slightly open in case there, uh, there, there can be more. If, uh, if they come a call in for part two, are you in? Uh, yeah, as long as Rachel, Hugh and Larry are writing um you know and Kristen is 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 star yeah I'm 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 in you know I mean it's we had such a good team of people that were behind the camera on this and Netflix was incredibly supportive so if we can bring the band back together and you know take another shot at it I'm 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 down well, especially considering the parameters that they leave off at the end, the uh, right, the room itself right. that you might have to work in. I, I'm I'm all for to see how you pull that off. So yeah, That's yeah, it. I'm I'm so I mean you know there was talk about it on you know on set and you know we all we're all very curious as to where this can go. Um, so let's see what happens. All right, Michael, uh, it's been a lot of fun talking to you. Thank you so much. Congratulations on this one, and uh, I'm looking forward to the next ones as well. Thanks for having me, Kyle, man. I appreciate it. And uh, right. you take care, all right? All right, you too. We'll see you around. Thank you.